Okay, so here's the final look. You guys, I forgot to do an intro. I'm so sorry. So I'm just jumping straight into the video. But if you like the look in the thumbnail and in the beginning, that's what I'm going to be achieving today. I am so sorry. I don't even know how that slipped my mind. So I already went in with concealer, basically putting it all over my face. And I'm not doing my foundation or anything yet because I feel like whenever there's fallout, especially doing colorful looks, and then you try to remove the eyeshadow from all of the fallout all over your face. I hate it. Like, it's the worst. So I'm just going to start with eyeshadow and then I'll finish off with my foundation and contour and everything at the end. I'm going to use my favorite base other than the MAC uh, Paint Pot in Soft Ochre. It is the P. Louise, I forget which color I get zero <laughs> so i also have this in the i think 1.5 and i really like it i like this one for colorful looks and i like the nude one for when i'm not doing eyeshadow i'm going to use a beauty blender and just dab it all over my eyelid Now that I have that on, um, I really don't like to go in with a thick coat. I know it looks coated, but um, I use a damp blender because I feel like it gives an even coat. That's not too much. Like, I honestly have noticed that if, you, if I put too much of a base on, my eyeshadow goes on so weird. Like, I just don't feel like it blends the same. Maybe it's in my head, but I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to do a really colorful look today, and... I was thinking, I saw a TikTok the other day and it was this girl doing like super, super colorful shadow like all across from her inner corner all the way out to like the end of her brow. And I don't know if I can actually do that, but I'm going to try because um, it looked so good. There's four palettes I'm considering using. I don't know which one I'm going to choose though. So I have the MAC and Jeremy Scott um palette and it looks like this and i haven't used it much i wish i could say i love it i love their um like single pot shadows i have a million of them but um this one the pigmentation is not the best i don't know i'll, I'll re-swatch it right now i guess the pigment's good like it's just not i'm somebody who loves bright but um, maybe I should use this to like actually build up the color. I don't know. I just like simple pigments though where you can just put it on and it's really bright. So I also have not used this palette. I know everybody has the Back to Brazil palette. I have not used it. Maybe I will today. I don't know. Also thinking about using my Morphe palette. The pride palette from last year I think maybe two years ago now so I literally dug until pan on this one I don't know what what I was using it for so much but when I got this palette I literally dug to the bottom of all the glitters in this palette and I don't really know why okay and the last colorful palette is a given my James Charles palette I kind of want to use it because it's really bright and I know it's going to give me the color I want but I also feel like I should be using palettes that I bought because why did I buy them if I'm not going to use them um but like a lot of like makeup lovers I do just collect a lot of makeup so I'm trying to keep palettes that I know that I'm actually going to use or palettes that were expensive like this palette was $75 and I just don't want to waste it and not use it ever. So I think I'm going to use my MAC one because uh, I've had it forever. I've broken the mirror on it, unfortunately. Um, it's so pretty. I think I should just use it. Okay, so I adjusted the camera and I am ready to start. So um, I've never done like any eyeshadow tutorials, so this might be really really bad but I'm gonna do my best um and I will improve over time but again I've never done this so okay so I'm gonna go in with this yellow shade right here and I don't still have the slip that it came with it came with the slip that had all the colors I don't still have it I don't know why I got rid of it um but oh you know what I think the shades are on the back oh this is like a puzzle 
so they have like a photo and then all the colors okay so so i'm going to go in with number 19 memories of space and i'm just going to pack it on the inner corner of my eye and out just a little bit further Okay, so this is actually much more pigmented than I remember it being. Uh, granted, I never really actually got around to using it though. I just swatched it. And something I've learned is swatching is seriously so different from actually using a product. So I don't really know why I prejudged it because the pigment looks really nice so far. Get a blending brush so I can just blend out the harsh lines from packing it on. And then I'm going to go in with my next shade. So I'm actually going to go back in and get a little bit more pigment. Um, it's not blending the way I thought it would, but it's probably just me. I think I'm, I was holding the brush a little too close to the edge and making some unintentional harsh lines. So I'm just going to go back in and do it correctly this time. <laughs> Okay, so now that I have that all blended out, I am going to go in to this orange shade right down here. And this orange shade is in the color Endless Frequency. So I'm going to go in with this color now. And I always start with going in with my packing brush, which I just get a really dense brush. And then I use a fluffier brush to blend it out. And I'm also not bringing the color all the way up to my brow because I'm going to use that area to blend and make it look blended. Um, and again, like, I don't even know if this is going to come out good. I've never done a straight up and down blend other than when I started makeup. So if you can imagine how that went, it was just a disaster. But um, yeah, I'm going to go in and blend this out into the yellow and um, see how it looks. So this is how it's looking so far. It's lost a lot of its pigment in me blending. So um, I'm going to add a little bit more. But I also don't want it to have so much pigment where I can't blend it out smoothly anymore. Um, I definitely would rather it look pastel-y and more light. And also, like, I'm not a professional makeup artist. I've been doing my makeup for years. But I only started using really bright colors about a year and a half ago. So I've learned most of the stuff I've learned off of the internet, honestly. <laughs> so I do feel like um, I'm sure there's techniques to really brighten eyeshadow that is going straight up and down like this. Um, but it's nothing that I have experienced like professionally. So I'm just kind of like playing with the makeup, doing what I can. And um, I just don't want to wreck it. So <laughs> I'm trying to be careful. Okay, so I went in again with the same color and I'm just going to blend it out the exact same way, but now I'll have a second layer of pigment. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with this red shade. This is so awkward. I'm trying not to like show my mirror okay so i'm gonna go in with this red shade right here and this red shade is in walking heartbeats so i'm just gonna do the same thing that i've been doing and i'm gonna keep repeating these steps just so i can speed it up I've really been feeling colorful makeup though lately like I also feel like this is so weird but I feel like it has something to do with moods too because I've gone through really bad depressions 
and when I've gone through depressions my makeup's been like black eyeliner black eyeshadow I'm not kidding like I've noticed that the more productive and happier I feel the more colorful I do my makeup but then again makeup is so therapeutic for some people that like it makes sense and it's therapeutic for me so it makes sense but it's still so trippy how like during good times I feel like I'm doing colorful makeup and then bad times it's really dark like really really thick black eyeliner like just kind of goth looking so I don't know it's just a weird thing that I've noticed um but I guess I've been doing okay for a little bit then and I feel like I have been feeling a lot happier and more positive um but I think that has something to do with the people you surround yourself with too though because that's changed a lot too I've made friends and then been like oh this is not for me in the past you know six months or so and sometimes I just feel that there are people who actually drain your energy like they make your energy so bad and just so much worse than your energy ever would have been and some people just aren't for me and that's fine like no shade to people who I didn't hit it off with or get along with or people who have been in my life who I feel like didn't bring it up or make it better like really no shade to them I wish people the best I genuinely do but it doesn't mean that they have a good energy that like has brought me up I seriously have noticed the people I'm surrounded by affect how I'm feeling so much so whenever people are like, oh no, I'll just keep that person around because like it's awkward if I don't, I always remember that even through any relationships that I've ended, um, even if it's family, like, and I know that sounds crazy to some people, but I feel successful and happy because of the choices I've made that have led me to where I am today. And it's just protecting my energy. That's all it is. And I would suggest anybody does that. Like, seriously, I really would. So, yeah, anyways, I do notice that my makeup has reflected how I've been feeling lately. And I really do think it has to do with my surroundings, my choices, um, my work, you know, working harder. It takes more time and energy, but... I feel so much more positive, so just being passionate about things I'm doing lately, it's really brought my energy and mood up, and I feel like a nicer, happier, less depressed person, so cut that negativity out of your life, you know? Okay, so this is how it's looking so far. I actually really like it. Um, I'm surprised at how well the colors are blending together. But I really do credit that to me not going over the top packing and packing and packing, which I've had a tendency to do in my early days of experimenting with makeup was just like, oh, I need three pounds of this color. And then I'll try to like, you know, like basically doing that on my eye, like just like going ham with so much pigment. So I'm going to go in with what color next? I think I'm going to go in with a purple next. And I'm going to do this really pretty bright purple right here. So this purple is in the shade Club New Wave Mix. <laughs> so I'm going to go in with that shade right now and do the same thing I've been doing. This is coming out so bomb. I really like it. Okay, so I'm going to go in and blend this color out right now. I'm really not feeling this purple color. It's coming out nice on camera, but in person, I really think it's blending weird. Every other color has been gorgeous though, so maybe it's because it's the darkest color I've worked with so far. It's just standing out to me. Okay. It looks okay. It's okay. I think it looks okay. Okay, 
Okay, so if I'm being honest, I think like a little critique of what I did and maybe what you won't want to do for this look. I blended way too hard going up here near my brow with the purple. So I made it look a little harsh, um, just not what I was going for. But I may just take a highlighter and go over that area to make sure that it doesn't look so harsh. But I did make it really a lot more harsh than I expected to. So uh, going in with a dark color like purple, I would be careful of that because I just messed up doing that. So next I'm going to go in, or I guess last, with this blue right here. It's like an aqua blue. It's really pretty. And I have to say, I'm really surprised by this palette. I know I'm not reviewing this palette, but if I was doing a review, um, it's really nice. I'm really surprised by the blending uh, capability of it. I didn't expect for it to be so pigmented. So I do really like it, actually. Like, I'm mad at myself, kicking myself in the leg for not using it sooner. Because it, it is the most expensive palette I own. Um, okay, so this color is Electric Eel. I love the names of this palette, too. It's so cute. So, since this is my last color, I'm only bringing it halfway up. I really don't want to go over the top, bringing it up to my eyebrow. Like, that will look crazy. So, I mean, if you want to, though, like, go for it, girl. But for me... That's not the look for today. I actually did a look the other day where I brought the blue past my eyebrow and I feel like it looked so sick. I'll insert a photo. I haven't posted on Instagram yet, but I probably will by the time this video is up. But I was like, damn, that looks really good. Like, you know, whenever you haven't really, you're not like a pro at makeup. So you do something as you're learning all these new skills and you're getting better and improving. And you're like, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> that's that's how I felt about that whole look. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. So I'm going to blend out this blue and then I will be back in a second. So this is how the first eye came out. I might do a little more blending of the purple into the red because I don't love that area, but overall it looks really good. Okay, I think this came out so surprisingly sick. Like, I'm very surprised that I like it as much as I do. Um, I'm really tempted to go in and make all the colors brighter, but I feel like I should leave them. So I'm going to leave them. Uh, but I am going to go in with a neon liner. This is my favorite eyeliner, other than the lime green one that they have. This is the ColourPop Cream Gel Liner. I love it. Like, I love it so much. I use it all the time. Before using that, I used my NYX liquid liners on my waterline, and they burnt so bad like they burnt really really bad so I started using gel liner um and it was a really good choice actually because I never knew that my eyes didn't need to burn to look good so I'm going to go in with the gel liner right now and show you how it looks <laughs> Okay, so this is how it looks so far. Um, I know some people would say that this just ruined the look because it doesn't match the other colors, but I love art and I consider this kind of like an art form. A lot of makeup artists do. I mean, makeup artists, you know, like I'm not going to do everything just because one way might look way more amazing. Um, I always just do what makes me happy and makes me feel like satisfied at the end of a look so this is what I ended up doing I'm gonna put on my mascara now and I'm actually trying out the shop miss a fat lash mascara so um I got this in a haul I just did and it's really good like I've been using it every day I really like it I also got the skinny mascara and I dropped it behind my counter back here 
so I haven't been able to use it, um, but it's really good too. So um, it lasts longer than some expensive mascaras I've used, so I don't really know what's in it, but it works really well. So my goal with mascara is never actually to get really long lashes because I I am an avid wearer of false lashes. Like, I am always wearing false lashes. So, I really don't have a need for wearing, um, like, a ton of mascara. But with this mascara, it's almost unavoidable to have your lashes be really popping. So, I mean, it's really good. Like, it's almost too good. So, I'm going to go in on my bottom lash line now. Um... Like I said, I have this skinny one, which I use for my bottom lash line, um, but it fell behind my desk, so I'm not going to grab it. Okay, so I have mascara on my top and uh, bottom lash line, so now I'm going to go grab some lashes. I'm going to use really dramatic ones because as much as this look might be dramatic to some people, it's kind of mellow in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put lashes on. And then I'm going to go on with my makeup after. But I'm just, I'm going to do that all off camera after my lashes because it's going to be too much, like way too long. So, um, yeah, I'm going to grab some lashes from my lash line. I'm going to do like a very, very tiny plug-in of that. So I do have a lash line on my Shopify that it's, it's an extension of my business. Um, I had a business before my YouTube and everything, but I did just launch a lash line. And my my company is really important to me because I donate a portion of all proceeds to charity. Um, and it's a nonprofit to write love on her arms. And basically they help people who are going through addiction or mental health issues. And I am a former addict and I, like I said, have struggled with depression in the past. So um, it's something that's really important to me and not just me, like... This affects almost every household, at least in America, I'm sure in most countries. So um, that's kind of the why behind my business. Like, I know a lot of people just start businesses as a cash grab, but I really would be so hyped if in the future I was able to donate this huge sum of money to a nonprofit like that. So anyways, that's um, the lashes I'm going to be using. But um, yeah, my... My business is really important to me. Like, it's not just a business to me. It's an opportunity to help people be in a place that I never thought I'd be in. So, um, I'm going to grab the lashes. But anyways, that's, like, the story behind that. Okay, so I'm going to use lashes um, in the style West Hollywood. So, these are pretty dramatic. And they're not actually, like... A typical style that I would use but um one of my affiliates used these lashes and they weren't like you could tell her style so I was thinking like if they look good on her they'll probably look good on me and they did look really good so I'm gonna put them on um I just ate dinner actually in between that so I hope that the makeup hasn't like worn down and looked bad now but whatever what can I do so I'm going to put the lashes on now this is also a little side note, but I don't know what kind of glue you guys use for your lashes. Um, and I've tried so many different glues, but the one that I continuously go back to is the Duo um, glue, but it's like green. It's the green one. So this one is hypoallergenic. So I have a really sensitive skin. Like I break out, not acne wise, just like my skin will break out in bumps if I put on like baby oil or just weird random things. So this actually eliminated that problem completely. Um, but I've had this bottle too long and it's starting to irritate my eyes. It's probably expired. Um, it's really gross, but whatever. <laughs> Okay, so that's one lash, so they are so dramatic. Um, but like I said, I feel like they look so pretty. Um, I don't know. I don't really know what to say about them. Other than that, like, it's not my typical style, but once I wore them, I've been hooked since. Also, these lashes are reusable. 
like many many times i don't like putting a number on it if i had to i would say 10 to 15 at most but i've used these four times now and they still are in really great condition um like i've obviously cleaned and taken all the lash excess glue off and all that um but they've held up really well <laughs> Okay, so I've seen so many people do a bunch of tricks on, like, how to make your lashes look even better once they're on. Like, how to make them stick all day and, like, where you can go, like, that a bunch and they'll stay. Um, but I haven't found any of the hacks to actually work. Or a lot of them are dangerous. Like, to put your false eyelashes underneath your lashes. And I just don't feel like that's safe. That's me personally, though. Some people would disagree with me and have tried it and it's worked. But then other people in the comment sections of like tutorials on that are like, oh my god, my eye's falling off. So I'm just not one who wants to risk my health for a trend. Like, I just feel like I'm going to stick with the old fashioned way of putting lashes on. I also don't know if you noticed, but I don't use tweezers. I occasionally do. And if I'm doing a video for my business, I will use tweezers um, because it looks more professional and nice. But in my day-to-day -day life, I don't use tweezers. Uh, I find them to be really inconvenient, actually, a lot of the time. They're only good to push down the lashes onto your lash line. So like I said, this is definitely a crazier look, like, as far as the lashes and the colors. But I think it came out really good. I'm going to go in and put on my foundation and contour and highlight and everything. And then I will be back to show you guys the final result. Okay, so here's the final look. Um, I know I look like a catfish, but um, my technique in contouring and blush has actually almost made it look like I had plastic surgery lately. Uh, somebody told me that my cheeks looked like I had fillers. Which, like, I'm 20. I don't know. I guess my age doesn't play into it. But, like, I don't know. I'm never had fillers. I just feel like I'm so young. And if I ever did something, it would be, like, far, far in the future when I'm older. And, like, feel like, I don't know. Like, if I felt like I wanted something done, then that would be something that I would visit then. But, anyways, like, my makeup technique has changed so much over the past couple of years especially lately um i've been using eyeshadows as blushes and it shows up so much more pronounced and brighter and so i used this shade in my pride palette and i went in like i did not do it lightly i put a full amount on a blush brush and then i just packed it onto my cheeks so, um, if you guys actually want to see my full face, like how I did it, I just uploaded it onto TikTok. So I will add my TikTok. I've been posting every day. Like I usually am somebody who, uh, like steers a little more clear of social media, but I am starting to realize that it's a great tool for a portfolio for makeup. And I really, really want to get a job at Mac when I move to Texas. So I live in LA right now. I hate LA. I really don't like the people here. Um, I've never really liked the energy here, like at all. So me and my boyfriend feel the same way. We're finally gonna move. And um, when we move, I was thinking like, the makeup industry is so saturated here. I went on six interviews for a job at Mac and I'm not talking about separate applications. This was one application process. So for this one application that I put in at 18 years old, two years ago, I went to six interviews. And then on my sixth interview, um, I brought in my model and she was El Salvadorian and her skin tone was very like olive toned. And then they switched my model, which like, of course they did that, which is fine. I get it. Like, but I had obviously been prepared for this model and this skin tone. They switched my model to a dark skin girl and I'd never done makeup on a complexion darker than I would say like a deep olive skin tone. So basically what ended up happening was I thought like, you know what, I'm going to do my very best and 
I actually really understood why they didn't hire me at that point because I didn't have any experience then and I also was not very good at my own makeup but like I didn't want that to stop me from pursuing a job I really wanted so I haven't given up but I did at that point take a step back get a job at another makeup store I worked at elf for like four months and two months in I got promoted to manager so I have you know like a good resume now I've also been self-employed so I imagine that that might be something that's appealing like you know I am definitely good when it comes to work ethic and I'm able to run my own business so I should be able to you know work at a regular store with all the experience that I've built up now but at the end of the day like I get why at that point they didn't hire me, but I am trying to get hired there when I move to Texas. Like, that would be my dream, honestly, because um, I do think I'll be financially okay enough to not have a job, but I really want to make connections with people in the makeup world, and I think that'd be a good way to go out of my comfort zone, and um, who knows? Maybe I'll end up being a makeup artist in Texas. Like, I have no idea, but... Um, that's like where I'm at right now with that. That's why I'm posting a lot on social media right now. It's really so that I can um, build my future. The future, like it or not, I think is in social media. So I have to post to my business Instagram every day. Um, I'm try I've been trying to post to my personal Instagram every day. I even have enough posts to do that like lined up, but I haven't posted them. So I still need to do that. And then I'm posting to TikTok a lot though. Sorry, that was a huge explanation, but it's kind of why and where I'm at with that. Um, I don't feel differently about social media. I think people are terrible on social media a lot of the time. Like some of the comments I see, I don't know if you guys do this, but I'll read a comment and I'm like, oh my god, you're so rude, like, and you want to come at somebody for just being so mean-spirited, but then you're like, no, like, that's not my battle. They're battling their own shit. That's why they're doing that. So it's just, it's a battle with social media. I know everybody goes through it, um, and it's just, it's a nasty environment sometimes. Whatever, I'm rambling about social media, like, I have a tendency to do that whenever I bring it up or somebody else does. I really think it's like the future though in business. And so I can see a Mac employee maybe looking at my makeup Instagram and being like, this girl can do makeup or, you know, the other way around, this girl can't do makeup. So <laughs> I just want to make sure that I have a good sized portfolio. Um, and hopefully even a following by some point, because unfortunately that does play into um, if people take you seriously or not. It shouldn't, but it does. So whatever. Anyways, this is my final look. And this is how the eyeshadow came out. So I don't know how my lashes look when I look down, but um, I'm very happy with this look. I think it came out really pretty. And... I really like it. Also, I cut bangs again, so I pinned them back. That's why it looks like that. But um, anyways, I really appreciate you guys watching my first tutorial. Um, I posted a haul, and when I posted my haul, and when I posted my haul, it did really well. Like, I was really surprised. I've gotten some subscribers, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to post this too and really dive more into the makeup part of YouTube too for me because I do love makeup and yeah I think it's a space that I've been scared to be in but that I would want to be in so anyways I hope you guys really enjoyed this video I've gotten a couple of dms from my business side of YouTube um thanking me and also like asking more questions about the fashion district and I just wanted to let you guys know that like I am so like, I'm shocked for one that, like, I've really helped people. I was hoping I would, but I'm just, like, little me. So, I don't know. I don't know. It's just really cool. And I am really happy to help. So, really, if you want to DM me, I always respond. I do care. Um, and, yeah, it's just, like, really weird. I It's just so weird to me. Like, but I'm just glad I'm able to help. So, anyways, I hope everybody's doing well or doing as good as you can be right now. Um, and I've seen a lot of people going back to work and stuff, so I hope you guys are safe.
but things are crazy, I know. So I will see you guys in my next video. My next video is likely going to be on how I started my Shopify. So if you're here for the makeup, um, that likely won't be for you. But um, I would appreciate if you guys would support my Instagram by following it. My business Instagram, that would mean so much to me. Because uh, I work, I put in a lot of work into those Instagrams to build them into something bigger one day. All right, I will stop talking. I know I do it in every video, but um, anyways, thank you guys so much. I will see you in my next video. Bye.